methi chicken. Um, the ingredients for methi chicken are five to six pieces, which is roughly um, about 300 to 400 grams of chicken, uh, which has been marinating in the fridge with some yogurt, about a tablespoon and a half of yogurt, red chilies, ginger garlic paste, salt, and little turmeric. This has been marinating in the fridge overnight. And then the garam masala. We have bay leaf, cloves, about uh, four of those, two green cardamoms, whole green cardamoms, one teaspoon of jeera, and finally about 20 peppercorn. This is what we're going to roast and make our garam masala. Ginger garlic paste, about a tablespoon. Roughly chopped onions. This is one medium sized onion. Roughly chopped tomatoes. This is one medium sized tomato. Two bunch of fenugreek leaves. I'm using fresh fenugreek leaves. If you don't have it or it's not in season, you can also use dry fenugreek leaves, which is also called as kasuri methi. This is two bunch uh, coarsely chopped and washed. Here I have a kadhai with about a tablespoon and a half, rather a tablespoon of oil. I'm going to pop in our whole garam masala, two cardamoms the jeera, peppercorn and half a bay leaf and four cloves. We are going to just lightly saute it till we get a nice aroma. We have removed the whole garam masala from the oil and left a few, left few jeera here. We are going to grind the whole garam masala and make a powder which is what we will be using at the later stage. To the oil, we're going to add the onions. This is one medium onion, coarsely chopped. We're going to fry it till um, maybe golden brown. As you see, our onions have fried and they're slightly golden brown. Now I'm going to add about half a tablespoon ginger garlic. Remember, we've added ginger garlic to our marination. So this step is optional. You can skip this step if you want. After adding the ginger garlic paste, we're going to fry it for about a minute. It's a minute and we have fried our ginger garlic paste along with the onion. Um, at this point, you can either add tomatoes or chicken. It's a personal preference. I like adding chicken at this point of time because I would like to lightly fry it along with the onion and uh, let the flavors ooze out. We are just going to fry it with the onion and the ginger paste. Just gently turn it around so it can ease out its flavor into the oil. Just keep mixing it well. about golden brown. It's about two minutes and as you see the chicken has uh, seen in its flavor and left a little oil which is what we want. This is the perfect time to add some tomatoes. We add about a bowl of tomato which we have chopped some time back and just cook it gently with the chicken. It's about a minute since we added the tomatoes and you see it's left all this water and also the chicken has 
left the water. This is one of the main reasons why I add the tomatoes after I have fried the chicken. Um, for sometimes um, there would be pieces in the chicken that tends to get chewy if you add tomatoes. So the best thing is to add tomatoes after you have cooked the meat. So that way it helps cook the tomatoes better as well as the chicken. Great. So I'm just going to increase the flame and give it a quick stir. Okay. And just with this fat sugar, just breaking into the tomatoes and making sure all the tomatoes become nice and mushy. Basically making fabulous put this into the sauce. Right. Awesome. So that's how it is. Now <clears throat> I just reduce the flame. And this is the perfect time to add our powdered garam masala. I have used the bottle and pestle. You can go ahead and grind it in a regular grinder. I like it little coarse so that through the cooking it can ooze out some more flavor. There we go. Now give it a quick stir, like so. Mmm, it's already giving out this gorgeous smell. Wow, this is lovely. And look at the color, it's really mild, saucy but mild, not overpowering with the color of the turmeric which we added during the marination or any other color. Nothing is overpowering, it's all well blended. Mm, that's gorgeous. Great. Now once we've just given a quick stir with the garam masala powder, it's perfect time to add our methi leaves or fenugreek leaves. As I said, I am using fresh leaves. Oh, don't worry, I'm using my hands. I've, I've washed and sanitized my hands. So no worry. There we go. I'm not going to mix it right now. The trick, according to me, of um, you know keeping the color of the fenugreek leaves green and intact, yet... Um, you know, getting the perfect flavor of the leaves is to just cover your dish, whether it's vegetarian, non-vegetarian, whatever it is. Just cover the dish with it. Put your flame to sim, which is on low heat. Or it's on a high burn, a medium burner. I'm putting it on a low heat. And I'm going to cover it with a lid. Okay. We're going to leave it like that for about um, two minutes, I guess, and then we'll come back and see how it's going. Okay, great. Now, as you see, I'm just cooking it through. Now, all I'm going to do is just pierce my spatula and see if the chicken is cooked. Voila, chicken is cooked. Great, so I have um, just like 30 seconds. I gave it a quick stir on a high flame. You see it's already leaving the oil, which is what we want. However, I gave it a taste and I feel it requires a little, not too much, just a little sprinkle of red chili powder. There you go. And just to balance that, we need a little bit of salt so that it's well seasoned. There you go. A quick mix. Great, master. There we go. And we're ready. All right, people. That's our methi chicken. Yes, you can see chilies there as decoration. <laughs> you can eat it if you want to, but that's only for decoration. Um, so serve it with hot rotis, parathas, fulkas, pita bread. Um, 
So, so it hot and enjoy.